In this video, we're going to do a quick review in terms of EMC and signal integrity for one of the boards designed by one of the members of the academy. My name is Dario Fresu. I'm a fourth generation electrical specialist and principal EMI control engineers at FresuElectronics.com. We retrain engineers, including Fortune 500 subsidiary, to master EMC design with a strong focus on practical EMI control. Great job to start with, and then let's see what we can improve already. So the first thing that I would like to improve is this stack up in here, because you have the top and you have the reference plane, and then you have the power and the bottom layer. So in here, you're going to have some issues in terms of this power layer there, because when the signals on the bottom layer are propagating, they want to close the current loop. But since you have this power plane there, they cannot really close the current loop because the power plane and the return reference plane, they are DC disconnected. So for the current loop to be complete, the current will have to jump in form of the displacement current here, which will generate some voltage drops. And so this is really one of the issues that you might have in here, because still the power plane can be okay, but depending on the signals that you have, it's not going to be exactly what you want to have in there because it can create some common mode issues for the board. The first layer and the second layer, they are good because their signals, they are going to propagate in here. So your signals will essentially propagate in the stack up in here, in the dielectric. So all this place is going to be dedicated for the signal. So remember that the signals propagate in the dielectric and not really in the copper plane also good that you have ground and power in here. So the energy is essentially between these two layers. What I don't really like much in here is that you have the ground plane so far from the power plane, because this will reduce the capacitance of the board. And at the same time, it will also increase the impedance of the power delivery net. So if you can reduce this distance in here, so reduce the distance between power plane and the ground plane here. Now, if you don't need the high current requirements, then what you can do is just route the power traces. So replace this power plane with another ground plane. And this will be the best stack up for the signal in here and the signal on the top. So use the thicker power traces, which also will improve with the EMI signature of this board, because when you have these two planes in here, what you essentially are creating is a cavity in this stack up. So you're going to have some signals in here that can resonate within the cavity that you created between these two layers. And so these can create some issues, although I saw that you also used some stitching vias to create a sort of a far-like -like cage in here. So that's a good job that you have used those. You can also use those even better. So you can reduce the resonance of the cavity when you use a ground plane in here. So if you are replacing this power plane with a ground plane, then you can use a stitching VS throughout the, the entirety of the board. You can use a stitching VS here and you can use it there. And this will improve the board because it will reduce the cavity that you have between these two planes. And so what this one does is it shifts the resonant frequency to high uh, frequency range, which turns for you in a better performance in terms of EMI because at the higher frequency range, you're not going to measure in terms of EMC tests. This is also one of the benefits that you can have. From the other things in the layout in here, so we're going to see first of all the top layer here. So top layer looks okay to me. I wouldn't use the copper pour in here. And if you use, like I said before, make sure that you stitch it together. Okay, so they are tied to, to this ground plane, which are, is already good. Even this one here, maybe add some more stitching vias if you really want to use this copper pour. If not, you can just get rid of the copper pour together. And then in here, let's see also, you don't want to create this kind of antenna patches in here, because this is essentially, even though you have the stitching vias in here, you can have frequencies that can couple to this plane and can make this one resonate. I will then use these islands in here. So either you get rid of those and you don't use copper plane at all. Because also when you use the copper plane in here, you're essentially changing the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, which is composed, of, for example, by this tracing here, and the ground plane on the bottom. So when you add the copper plane, you're changing the characteristic impedance of the line because you're adding metal next to the signal trace. 
So if you have calculated the characteristic impedance of these uh, transmission lines, let's say that you want to have 50 ohm in here, then this one will change because you use also the copper plane. So just be mindful of that. Then in here, if you can just improve the distance between the traces, because you can use the space in here better since these are not the differential pairs, because this is also an LED. So the point that this is an LED, it doesn't mean that this one cannot create issues. Because even just a single GPIO, the triggers in there can create some issue because they might have some faster rise time. Now let's have a look at the ground plane. The ground plane looks okay. I'm just not sure about this copper island because I think in here you divide the ground with the ground signals. So I'm not sure in here what the purpose of it. If you try to separate the input signals to the rest of the planes, or if you have maybe some requirements in terms of coupling or safety. So just be mindful that this one can create some common mode issues because it creates the voltage drops in here. This is connected also to some cables. And then you can have some fields just like that because you have the common mode voltages in here. So be mindful when you separate the planes. Usually it's best not to separate the planes. For the rest, it looks okay. Maybe be mindful as well in here to have the reference for the signals when they enter. And then let's have a look at the power plane. Power plane as well. This one is really not recommended like this and I explain you why, because if you have some signals in here, these signals want to have their returner reference for the whole propagation of the signals. So if you have signals like that, for example, these signals here has the reference from here to there, but then it comes to this point and it loses the reference plane. So even though this is a power net, you don't want to do this. You want to have the returner reference plane, all the signals. So it's better not to have the power plane splitted like this, but to use a complete power plane if you have to use. If not, just simply route to the traces on the bottom layer or on the top layer. But I wouldn't recommend you to have these planes like this because the signals on the bottom layer, all the signals in here, you see, they don't have the reference plane here. And so this is going to create, first of all, some differential mode issues because the current through cloud is enlarged. Also some common mode issues because this one there is going to create some voltage differences. There is going to drive these voltage differences. They're going to drive some antenna modes in the ground plane. So please, if you can change this power plane, replace it with a full return reference plane like you have it here. So even a copy of this or improve by making it full ground plane and then add in the stitching VS between all these planes. Okay. And then as well, let's see some improvement in here. So these, they don't look to me like a differential pairs. So if these are not differential pairs, then you want to improve is this nothing here. So you don't want to have the signal traces so close to each other because this one is going to translate into crosstalk. The same in here, if you can just improve these connections, if these are not uh, the differential pairs, then you want to improve the connection in here. So we'll just increase the distance, make sure that you have enough distance between the traces so that the fields don't couple with each other, like in this case, because you see this one. When the signal starts from here, in here maybe it's fine, but then it comes to this point and it will couple like this and it will create some crosstalk. And the same for the bottom layer, if you can avoid to have this, this copper pool, then it will be best. And if you do just improve this, all these areas in here, like this part in here can become an antenna, this part in here can become an antenna because you see it's not connected anywhere there. These are here as well. Even though you have stitching VS, you have to think that even the VS, they will have some MPS there. So create some common mode issues. For the rest, it looks pretty much okay. Some of the connections that you might want to improve, make sure that even when the signal transitions in here, so when it's positioned here in the VIA, that you also have some return and reference VS next to each other. Because if I were to run one of these analysis, like the port reference integrity violation, in here probably we're going to find that there are some integrity violation of the signal. Because when the signal transition don't have close by the reference VS. So when you have the, stitching, the signal's VS, add next to it to some ground VS, so that also the signal, when it's transition, it always has the reference there. You can even run an analysis in here. Let's see something very slow, and then we can run the ERC simulation. So what we can do now is try to run the simulation here and see how this board is going to perform. 
in terms of essential analysis. Okay, so here we can see already we have some small issues here as well. This is impedance discontinuity. So if this is important for this particular signal, then you want to keep this in mind. And let's have a look at the report. So reference discontinuities, like I was saying, so you have cut out under and over the trout over solid grounds. And so this is on the top layer in here. And then the rest of them, like I was saying before, they're pretty much on the bottom layer. I can see that there are many discontinuities in here. You have 26 errors. Then trace impedance. If you were to calculate it for 50 ohms, you can see that you have some impedance change. These are 60 ohm impedance, 50 ohms. So you need to increase the width of the stresses to reduce the impedance. Now for the signal that I used, you have no VF hole impedance uh, violations, also insufficient number of stitching VS, but this all depends on the simulation parameters that I applied, which they were pretty low. Okay. So I hope with this quick review, give you a little bit of insights on how you can improve this board. I really don't see bigger issues besides the fact that this power plane, I will have it re replaced in there and then improving the distance between signal traces. So I hope you enjoyed this video here. And if you have some questions or if you would like to dive deeper into these topics, then you can check the link in the description and you can join the academy where we can help you become a PCB design and the EMI control specialist. Bye-bye.